Hey everyone, so I just uh, came across this video of Jagmeet Singh talking about you know some excess profit bills so that he can stop these corrupt, greedy corporations from uh, making too much money and then he wants to take that money and then he wants it to give it to us. What a nice guy. Well, let, let's have a look and see what he says here. We know that things are tough in Hamilton. We're, we're hearing from stories, we heard from the workers here that the needs are higher than they've ever seen before. More than ever, people are needing to turn to a food bank. Flanked by local politicians, federal NDP leader Jagmeet Singh spoke about the rising cost of groceries and the need for food banks this morning after taking a tour of the Neighbors to Neighbors Center on the Hamilton Mountain. The food bank has seen a nearly 40% jump in community need compared to the same time last year. We're seeing increases um, that we've never seen before. We've broken records, if I can say that. Uh, it's not a great thing, but we've broken records um, this year in terms of our food bank usage, serving over 5,000 people a month now. That's compared to around 3,000 a month in 2023. 5,000 a month. People are seeing a record usage of food banks. We also see another record being broken, record profits for corporate grocery stores. Singh is proposing a new excess profit tax that would see grocery giants pay more in government tax on the profits they make above a certain threshold. But that number is still to be determined. The NDP says the money would go towards upping the GST rebate, supporting the recent liberal announcement on a national food program in schools, and funding food banks like Neighbors to Neighbors. Food costs are, we know, uh, you know, our, our travel costs to go get food is up. All those things are, have gone up um, alongside government funding not keeping track. Singh says the tax would be expanded to big oil and gas companies eventually, a policy currently used by the United Kingdom. But a McMaster political scientist doesn't believe the Liberal government will go for it. No, I think there's pretty much a 0% chance uh, that this is going to happen. You know, it does raise uh, the question about why we fought inflation by raising interest rates, which has an impact on uh, hurting Canadians uh, who have mortgages, but also in reducing uh, the number of jobs available in the economy and slowing down economic activity. So why we chose to do that rather than trying to control prices is, is, an, is an important question that the Liberal government uh, should answer. During an in-studio interview at CHCH News this afternoon, Singh took aim at the Liberals, but stopped short of saying his party wouldn't support the minority government. But what do you think of Justin Trudeau's leadership? I would say he has come across very out of touch, and being out of touch means that he's ignored a lot of the problems people are going through. No shit. He admittedly hasn't used the power at the federal level to respond to the problems that people are going through. Neither of you. Yeah, we covered a number okay. of... Oh, these people drive me insane. So, first of all, let's just start with the whole excess profit. When they first started talking about that, they showed a picture of Metro. Isn't someone's brother a lobbyist for Metro? I mean, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments section, but pretty sure his brother's a lobbyist for Metro. So he's going to tax companies like Metro, who make, is one of the most expensive places to shop. He's going to make them pay more, even though his brother lobbies for them. And then what a nice guy. He's going to give that money back to us. Because that's what socialists always do. They take from the rich and they give to the poor, right? Wrong. If you don't believe me, ask yourself, why do people who immigrate or migrate to Canada and the United States largely come from either socialist or communist countries? Because it's so nice there? Well, more people stay in those countries. Yeah, because they have to. You, you, they're poor. Well, you can't do anything with you when you're poor. Like, it's, it's, he's so full of shit when he, said, when he says these things. I'm in it for you. Okay. And then the second thing he does is he calls out Justin Trudeau. Oh, he's out of touch. You're right, Jagmeet Singh. He is out of touch. So if he's so out of touch and Canadians aren't getting what they need from him, why wouldn't you give Canadians what they want and vote for the no vote of non-confidence, triggering an election? What could be the reason? Oh, he wants his pension. And that's why the Liberals are trying to move the election back at least one week in 2025 so that 20 Liberal MPs who are about to lose their jobs can get their cushy little pensions for doing a bad job. And Jagmeet Singh wants his too. 
Remember, remember Canadians, if you, if, you, if you support the NDP specifically, this guy is in it for you, but he won't give you what you want, and he'll hold you hostage to this liberal government that he apparently doesn't like, but he won't give you the election. Like, just think about that for a second as to why someone would criticize someone and then continue to keep them in power. And not only that, he hasn't broken off the coalition. All he's done is said, well, I'm going to break it off. Or I'm not going to have a new one in the future. Both of your parties should be fucking resolved because you're terrible and you're communists or you're socialists. This is not a pro-conservative. Conservatives are great. I understand they got problems, too. But Jesus Christ, at least things are never this bad financially under the conservatives. And that's why most people, including myself, unfortunately, have no choice but to vote for them. I'm not going green. I'm not voting for the PPC. No. The PPC, listen, let me tell you something about Maxim Bernier. He is such a weak leader that he could not win a riding in his own riding. Sorry, he couldn't win his home riding in a by-election in Manitoba. He went up against a conservative whose name happened to be Brandon. He used a slogan for his campaign that read, let's go, Brandon. You ever heard that before? Yeah, so he couldn't beat a guy who has the worst marketing team in all the conservative party in his own home writing. That's how much he sucks. He doesn't have a seat in parliament. You think he's going to, he's done. So where, where, where can I go? I can either stay at home and not vote, or I can get this communist wannabe out of here the only way I can. That's by voting conservative. And for all the people who don't like that, well, there's a lot of people like me who aren't even conservative who are going to vote for him. And that's why you're seeing these numbers, you know, the, these numbers for Pierre Polyev continue to rise in the polls, because people are just sick and tired of it. Last time rent was affordable... You can say under the first couple of years of Trudeau, but that's because his policies take time to enact, just, or t uh, take time to take place. Just because you enact a policy, that doesn't mean you know everything changes just like that, right? Like you gotta, it takes time. But once his policies started to make their way through, all you've seen is just everything get more expensive. Virtue signaling about climate change, even though it's gotten worse under him. Well, he flies around in a private jet. Oh, he needs it for his job. No, he doesn't. He can get a first-class plane ticket on a charter. There's planes flying out of every airport multiple times every day. Well, it's inconvenient. Yeah, so is his taxes. So is his totalitarianism during the pandemic. And by the way, if you still think he uses his private jet all the time because he needs it, he takes it when he goes on vacation too. Fuck off. He has the biggest carbon footprint in all of Canada. He's like, oh, we got to do something about this. Well, why don't you show us by example? Why don't you lead by example? Fucking idiot. I mean, I'm so sick and tired of these people. I can't wait until they're gone. And then we can finally maybe, you know, get our country back. And maybe finally we can have a middle class that gets restored. Maybe not. But I like the odds under Pierre Polyeau over Justin Trudeau because we've seen nine years under this idiot. And everything has gotten, I mean, you can't say there's no changes, but everything has gotten worse. No positive changes, at least financially. So that's going to be it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, sorry about I went on a little bit too long of a rant there, but I appreciate you guys watching. Let me know in the comment section what you think, and don't forget to subscribe.